This video is about the repair of a Bertan 21001R high voltage power supply which I got on eBay for a fairly low price uh, since it was apparently broken and uh, at, that, at that time I didn't know what the situation was and uh, I decided I would take a look at it and uh, see if I could fix it if it was broken. The seller said it was powering on but was making a buzzing sound and um, beyond that I had no idea what else was wrong with it so uh, here's the unit from outside uh, I've opened up the case and actually fixed it but I wanted to go and uh, go back and show what I did to make it work again as far as the specs are concerned uh, this has a one kilovolt output as you can see on the meter uh, the whole uh, 1000 volts and it's a single knob to tune the voltage it's um, like a fraction of a volt accuracy in terms of um, being able to tune it in uh, there are no knobs like the higher voltage units which uh, can go up to 10 kilovolts or 3 kilovolts but it's based on the same platform I believe uh, in terms of the schematics which I managed to obtain uh, on online uh, the current output is uh, 250 milliamps which is quite a punch actually at these voltages at 1 kilovolt 250 milliamps is uh, 250 watts of power into the load and it can uh, lethal voltages at this point so uh, one has to be extremely careful when uh, working on these units uh, if you don't know what you're doing I would not recommend opening this unit up or attempting to repair it so um, I'll go in and show in a little bit more of the details of the inside of the unit and then uh, look at the schematics and uh, uh, go through my debugging procedure and uh, see what I did to get it fixed. So let me uh, describe the problem when I got the unit. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was working but based on what the seller told me he said the unit powers on but um, creates a buzzing sound. And, uh, I wasn't really sure what that meant and he had no capability of testing it so I took a chance and bid on it and uh, got it for about 100 bucks or so so um, so when I powered on the unit using the main switch uh, volt on uh, the voltage scale the output would read zero and on the current scale it would uh, fully peg out at 250 milliamps and beyond and this potentiometer or the control voltage um, knob would have no effect on either of these either the voltage or the current um, readings so I knew there was something um, major or at least um, in terms of either the HV supply was shorted out or possibly the protection wasn't working in the control board and not shutting it down or maybe the control board itself was defective it was hard to tell without um, opening it up and taking a look so so if anybody has the same uh, unit or similar unit um, I would recommend that you before you open this it's uh, you're quite familiar with um, dealing with high voltage supplies or you know um, being careful with um, how you go about uh, accessing the insides of the unit because there are lethal voltages inside and, uh, and the currents in this particular unit are fairly high uh, like 200 milliamps at uh, 1 kilovolt and of course the um, unregulated supplies and other HV supplies inside are also can carry a lot more current and um, can be uh, pretty dangerous to, to work with Here's the top level schematic of the HV supply. So it's fairly straightforward if you uh, at the top level. Um, so starting from the top left here, we have the AC input going through this power switch, uh, going through this ganged uh, selector switch for the 120, 240 volt selection, AC selection, the primary windings, then into the secondary windings. So the secondary windings have two uh, major parts to it. The first one uh, is a full wave rectified output that gives a 50 volt uh, DC that goes into the HV 
block with the large uh, 26,000 microfarad cap here with a bleeder resistor. Then the secondary uh, second winding is also full wave rectified, um, producing a minus 22 volt, uh, which is um, right here, and on this one is the plus 20 volts. And also there are two uh, electrolytic caps on each of the supplies, and this is the ground um, center tap output. Uh, so this is 100 microfarad 40 volts, same as this one, 100 microfarad 40 volts. Um, there's also the main uh, control board here, which is actually called PCB100. It has um, the inputs for the control voltage uh, coming off this uh, resistor here. This is the adjustable front panel 10 turn 5K resistor. On other units which have higher uh, output supply voltages, they can. There is also a selector switch which has multiple positions. So my unit is the the first one, two ten zero one R, which does not have this one. Um, going into the uh, output side, um, there are several outputs and actually inputs. Um, we have the the two drivers for the switching uh, transistors which are generated in this block the high frequency so called high frequency it's probably around uh, about the audio frequency maybe 25 kilohertz or so uh, which switches these large uh, four of these N2N6578 6578 uh, NPN transistors and there are one four on the top four on the bottom uh, which surround the fan actually and that goes into the into a flyback transformer, which then uh, then uh, sends a signal uh, that multiplied output into the final voltage multiplier, uh, which is enclosed in this box. I don't have a schematic for this, but I assume it's a bunch of um, uh, traditional approach of generating high voltage multiplication using capacitors and diodes. Um, one of the outputs from inside is brought back here uh, through this switch for the voltage sense and, uh, and depending on the polarity switch here, these are gang switches, it can sense either the positive or negative uh, 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 supply. I mean if it's set to minus it will select uh, this input, if it's set to positive it will select this input. And so, and over here, the LED for the positive lights up, and this is on the positive selection, and so on. And many of these switches are ganged, so they are all over the place. So it's uh, it's not very clear on the schematic because of the quality, but it's it's I think it's okay. Uh, what else? Uh, we have the current sense inputs coming in here through this feedback network. Out of this thing again, there is some some circuitry to do some filtering and some. I'm not sure, maybe some uh, current sense resistors here, but none of these are high voltage. I think they are um, somehow probably inductively or somehow coupled into this to produce some current that is then uh, sensed by these uh, by an op amp inside this block. Uh, there's also some selection switches for the um, remote and um, local. I think that allows you to control the input uh, the, the machine from outside in case you want to be um, you know sending in a voltage to set that uh, output voltage as well as do some other uh, programming but there's no digital pro programming although there's an option for that in this particular unit I don't have the digital programming option <clears throat> and so that's probably it uh, the meter here uh, which also is coming back off one of these um, outputs from here, from the HV assembly, um, right through here, and it um, basically, um, I, b I believe, it uses these inputs from the voltage sense, current sense, to to drive the 500 microamp full scale uh, meter, and there's also a switch to select the, between the voltage and the current, which is on the front panel. Now. Um, there are two um, 
outputs for the 12 volt and minus 12 volts but they are not actually used on this level and they are not accessible either at, you know, uh, except on the edge of the control board uh, card but uh, that's easy, difficult to access and not easy to measure. It's easy to measure of course these uh, voltages and you know all the B plus and so on but um, that's where I'm going to first start. So next we will look into this schematic uh, to show what's going on in there. So this is the PCB100 control board for the HV supply. I'm going to quickly go over this uh, although not get into much detail as it's kind of irrelevant at this point to look at too much of that internal stuff uh, except to check if the voltages are correct and if that's okay then we'll have to go deeper into each of the circuits but um, to give an overview um, we have the input plus and minus 20 volts coming in here which is uh, converted to 12 volts using this positive uh, 12 volt regulator and there's another negative 12 volt regulator LM320 T12 creates a minus 12 volts so the plus and minus 12 volts are used among many of these ICs on this on this particular board <clears throat> so um, looking from top to bottom and left to right we have the oscillator block that generates the switching frequency a relaxation oscillator AC coupled into this uh, OTA which is a CA3094AE its output is uh, current so that's converted to voltage uh, by uh, these two resistors that output is again AC coupled and fed into this amplifier which has some gain here, uh, the 10k, the 100k with negative feedback. Uh, that is again AC coupled and sent into the bias uh, input of the NPN transistor, the B base input of the NPN transistor. Same with the negative side, uh, the negative voltage is um, going through here into this amplifier which is driven off the negative 12 volt supply creating the negative pulse and then that's driving the another set of four NPN transistors. Over here on this middle section is the voltage section I believe. The input potentiometer setting is uh, red here and this amplifier and it's uh, amplified, buffered and it's sent into an error amplifier which compares I believe the input coming in that is the actual uh, voltage that is being delivered by this unit and that error of course is amplified and then used to probably most likely control this OTA whose current drive will basically change the, the drive of this uh, set of two amplifiers to bring the voltage back into its correct uh, level and then there is the meter output that is um, this one the voltmeter output and there's also the pin output to the J2 pin on the outside of the machine that can be monitored separately. Um, so these are two inputs. Uh, one is ground of course and this is the, actually the potentiometer setting. Over here is the current sensing inputs and again that goes into another amplifier which drives the meter directly over here and then this goes also to this uh, J2 pin that is externally observable and here is a standalone minus 5 volt um, reg, a kind of a reference supply in this implementation it actually using a zener with a trim in the board I have it's actually replaced by an AD586K uh, analog devices reference chip so they did make this change so this is probably more accurate however I don't see this negative 5 volts actually being used on this level it's just going out to a pin here so somebody can uh, comment on this if they know why what's the use of this minus 5 volt supply so as far as debug is concerned um, if the plus and minus 12 volts are okay when separately powered when the board is taken out of the system and powered 
then we would know that uh, there's nothing wrong with any of the ICs or any, any other components on this board. So that's what I did and I uh, powered it with plus and minus 20 volt from a clean uh, external power supply and, and basically I found that these two voltages were fine, plus and minus 12 volts. So at this point I can rule out any problems on this board, at least on the first uh, to first approximation, assuming there's nothing else wrong elsewhere. So then basically let's go up to the next level back and uh, go up and check the plus and minus 20 volts to see if they are okay. So if there are something, if there's something wrong with those two supplies, obviously then uh, it's possible to affect these two voltages as well. And so that's where we will uh, start the next part of our uh, investigation. <coughs> So uh, here's the top level again. Now uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, the plus 20 volts uh, was reading uh, 22 volts and the minus 20, 20 volt was reading minus 16 volts. So um, obviously um, if there's a problem, it, either there's a problem inside here which is um, causing the 12 volts to, to be loaded, minus 12 volts to be ex excessively loaded or there's a problem across these caps, uh, leakage or something else. The plus and minus 12 volts don't appear to do anything here so we can rule out loading on this level for those two supplies. So what I did first was to take this out of the uh, machine and uh, externally power it to plus 20 and minus 20 volts and measured the plus and minus 12 volts on the board and they turned out to be okay so so the current actually was only about 20 to 30 milliamps on each of these supplies so that indicated that this board was okay uh, when it was out of the board uh, indicating that the plus and minus 12 volts were not loading uh, this particular uh, machine so then um, I would basically want to see what happens on the plus and minus 20 volt supplies. So then I basically looked at these two caps. Um, so I took out uh, the C22, which is the negative cap uh, on the negative supply. And I noticed that it was uh, on the capacitance meter, it was reading 10 kilo ohms. And um, although if you look at it on a regular uh, multimeter, it had 20-30 mega ohms of impedance so obviously um, it's not that easy to detect these type of failures on these caps and and they are either voltage dependent or frequency dependent or something like that this uh, other cap this plus uh, 20 volt uh, filtering cap was okay so and also the voltage on that supply was not far off so the first thing I did was then uh, replaced uh, these, this cap, the minus 20 volt cap. And then uh, after I did that, um, the minus 20 volt supply went to minus 23.4 and the plus 20 volt supply was at 24.3. So both were, um, I mean, uh, definitely uh, not being affected as much as it was before. So there was something. Uh, basically the problem was most likely this capacitor was affecting the functionality of this whole uh, circuit. At that point of course I wasn't sure if fixing this cap would actually solve the entire problem of uh, the unit not working and with the shorted uh, current output and zero voltage output, the oscillations not working, a uh, lot of other peripheral problems were still um, not um, not sure that they were fixed by changing this one cap. So at this point um, we'll go into the testing of this unit after changing the cap. So I reconnected the, the two supplies which are disconnected prior to making these measurements, the, the driver supplies to, the, to these transistors because uh, I mean output of these transistors to the HV unit because they were making a lot of noise uh, driving this thing. 
So um, they are probably saturating this uh, transformer because it is running at 60 Hz rather than a much higher frequency. So that is what I will um, show next. So this is the top of the unit with the cover removed. I am um, going to give a quick overview of the various blocks before I show the, the, the post debug uh, fixes and then what I did to, to test it. So basically the transformer, the huge transformer on the left top left is the main power transformer. Uh, which has those two brown wires which are for the B plus supply. Uh, uh, so the lower voltage supply is basically coming off uh, uh, these uh, smaller thinner wires which you can see right down there the red and the purple which are after rectification coming uh, from the diodes uh, which is on the bottom side of this transformer so I'll show that later. Uh, the big cap here is a 50 volt um, filter cap, it's a 26,000 microfarad cap. Uh, the bleeder resistor 2.4K and the meter itself here. The rectifier is on the other side, actually on the bottom, I'll show it to you later for the B plus. And uh, the fan along with the four transistors actually the transistors on the right side are for the Q1, Q2 are for the positive uh, and there's Q3, Q4 on the bottom also for the positive and then there's Q5, Q6, Q7, and Q8 which are for the negative uh, switching uh, supply for the into the flyback transformer the control board is hidden right under this um, shroud like thing hard to see and hard to access while it's actually functioning. That is one of the major problems in trying to measure voltages on the control board while it was running. The flyback transformer is right here on the right side and you can see the B plus supply 50 volt is going to the one of the terminals on the for the flyback transformer and the two outputs from the collector connections from the NPN transistors are the blue and this below uh, the red one is a white and blue wire. There's also a cap across the two windings. Uh, that cap is probably difficult to see but I can see it right there uh, across the uh, positive negative uh, driver signals into the flyback. And um, this is the potentiometer for the 5k which sets the voltage from the outside the uh, VI uh, selection for the meter for the positive and negative LEDs indicating whether you are generating a positive or negative high voltage for the back of the unit um, the remote and, um, and the local switch which allows you to use it as an input I believe or as a monitoring output the fan and a um, positive negative switching uh, um, selector switch the high voltage output is um, disconnected at the moment on the SHV connector but uh, it is available on right now on this banana jacks and uh, this is the 150 20, 115 230 volt selector switch. So that covers pretty much all the controls accessible to the user. And now we look at the bottom side and then show the fixes that I talked about in the on the schematic diagram. And then we'll uh, power up the unit and see how it does. So this is the bottom side of the unit. Um, looks pretty sim similar to what we saw on the top, uh, on, at least on the fan side of things. So here the Q3, Q4 of the positive uh, driver and the Q7, Q8 the negative driver and uh, the four transistors on each um, leg of the positive and negative are on opposite sides of the chassis. So a better view of the control board uh, right here and uh, it's hard to really 
access anything while it's in this position here and so that's the rectifier right there for the B plus supply that's uh, mounted to the chassis which is a probably a high current output 25 amp diodes hence the uh, switches the front panel switches are visible here and that's the flyback transformer reverse side you can see the winding connections very clearly here and that's the selector switch for the plus and minus uh, selection of the HV output now um, the fix I had to do was to you can see this is the low voltage uh, side of the transformer there are four diodes the one in 4002 I believe uh, which do the full wave rectification to create the plus and minus 20 volt supplies the caps uh, are the new ones here which I've replaced they are smaller caps but the same value uh, 100 microfarad actually higher voltage capacity can handle 50 volts uh, the original caps uh, are actually here I'll show it to you here these are the two original caps which uh, failed uh, one of them failed so this is the one that failed uh, the negative supply and the positive supply has it's, it's okay and it's actually a, a wrong value but I think it probably doesn't matter in this case 220 microfarad and uh, this one was the correct value 100 microfarad but it had, uh, had a very low impedance uh, as seen on the capacitance meter so now uh, with this change uh, and then putting back all the connections I had removed such as the two connections for the driver to prevent that noise in the beginning while debugging I think I should be ready to power up and check the performance this is my uh, homemade uh, isolation transformer variac uh, kind of uh, thing that uh, I use for powering up unknown equipment as well as to uh, to be able to get some variable output voltages uh, from 0 to 240 volts uh, it has two ranges 0 to 120 and 0 to 240 so let's uh, power on this uh, HV high voltage supply using this so initially I'm going to uh, go into current uh, do a current limit mode to see what happens before I uh, make sure it's okay and then I will bypass the current limits to since it can't um, power on the entire unit without having the bypass on since uh, at least I need 2 to 3 uh, two to three amps at 120 volts to make it run this HV unit so now it's turned on and um, I have 117 volts I have um, roughly 340 watt bulbs in parallel so uh, it's probably not going to be able to power my HV unit if it's uh, fully functional or not shorted out um, even though it's not shorted out that is um, so let's power on the HV unit and see what happens <clears throat> as you can see uh, my bulbs have lit up that means it's not able to come on um, it's barely 75 volts so I need to bypass the current limit so at least not shorted so I'm um, hoping that it will come on okay there you go uh, it's now drawing uh, 66 and uh, watts of power uh, actually 1 amp 120 119 volts looks good so far all right so now the machine is on and uh, on full uh, current from the variac and it's now uh, set at 0 volts on the potentiometer and the meter reads 0.946 volts and that's uh, probably a low, small amount of error when it's set to 0 that's no problem and you can see the setting is 0, 0, 0 I'm going to raise it now to um, 50 volts 
to see uh, should get about 25 milliamps of current so the meter reads 25 milliamps fairly accurate this is 50 and the output is 49.66 on the DC output volt on the volt meter <clears throat> let's raise it to 100 volts and that's 100 volts meter reads 50 milliamps 2 kilo ohm load and voltage is 100.12 very accurate So now we have 150 volts, 149.44 on the meter, current is uh, 75 milliamps, perfect. Two hundred volts, as I said, uh, probably the maximum going to go with this uh, load resistance and uh, meter reads 199.64 current is 100 milliamps excellent okay continuing on uh, now with uh, taking out the load resistance because my uh, resistance cannot uh, box cannot take any higher currents so I'm just going to do this without any load uh, and see how uh, probably take the meter uh, up to like um, 500 volts and see if I don't want to damage my meter uh, so here it's at uh, sitting at 200 volts now 199.2 on the meter and this is 300 volts meter reads 298.99 and this is 400 volts meter reads 398.61 And this is 500 volts, meter reads 498.52. And there should be no current. Uh, meters are both accurate within the limits of the meter, I guess. Uh, probably stop at this point. Let it try and use a vacuum tube voltmeter, which can take maybe a thousand volts, and test it on that.